determine your destinies to make them establish. So my guess now bring your messages to establish what you need to know in the present. And also I like working with angels and the calmness they bring. Now, in a moment, I will introduce you to my wonderful guest, Anne Jersh. But just before that, I'd like to say thank you so much for watching this show live or to later date, as it means a lot to me to connect with like-minded women. Now, if you've never met before, then my name is Ray, and I love to help women at crossroads in their life, heal their past, create their future, and transform their present, so they can take control of their destiny in the here and now. I'm the founder of Radiant Angel Energy, and I use future life progression, past life regression, angelic reiki, meditation, angel cards, and hypnosis, to help women who feel lost get clear on their destiny and their reason for being here. Now, each episode of the show will cover various themes of your journey, a mini guided meditation or angel card reading, with the wisdom of my wonderful guests, like today's guest, Anne Jersh, who will be sharing how to anticipate your best way forward and the skills you will need to thrive in the future, giving you your future vision. Now, Anne Jersh is the London-born professional futurist with a large worldwide following. Her client base includes heads of industry, politicians and celebrities from the world of film, music and sport. She is a best-selling author of five books, Instant Intuition, The Future is Yours, Cosmic Energy, Create Your Perfect Future, and her current release, Future Vision, which finally arrived today after my original order went missing. Now, Anne has appeared on numerous radio and TV shows, including regular slots on BBC Radio, uh, BBC Morning News, and this morning where she hypnotised Natalie Cassidy and took her into a future lifetime. Dubbed the Queen of FLP, Anne travels extensively with her sellout workshops, seminars and public speaking engagements. Anne's FLP, Future Life Progression Training School, is now in 20 countries and I've been fortunate enough to train with her both as a practitioner and a teacher. And of course, this is her second time on my show, so it's brilliant to have her back. So without further delay, hello, Anne, and how are you today? I'm really good, yeah. I mean, I know, I know I'm supposed to be frantic and everything with the um, lockdown, but I'm actually, my life's not changed that much. <laughs> so <laughs> I really think I might be a bit boring because my life's not much different. You know, I'm still doing the same things I do every day. But no, it's, uh, I'm really good, actually. And, and what I like about now is connecting with people. You know, we're taking time to chat and contact people. And so, yeah, no, I'm really good. And obviously the new book's out and uh, get great, great feedback about it. So that, that's been really good. You know, I'm really, really grateful to have the opportunity to have the book out there. Excellent. So before we get into this fascinating conversation, I want to remind you that you can also ask questions, leave comments and insights as thoughts as both Anne and I want to be part of this conversation. So please do not be shy. So um, Anne, why don't you tell us more about yourself and how Future Vision can help you, will help us move forward and thrive? Well, uh, uh, Basically, I've been looking into the future most of my life. That's what I do. I do it for clients, do it for myself. We look at world events. And I started, hi, Jackie. And uh, <laughs> we got Sita here it. as well. Hi, Sita. Yeah. Lovely, Sieta. Um, so I, I've always looked into the future. Um, but I started about five years ago. Seeing people coming to me and there was something changing. And the change was that life was sort of out of control, so much change, constantly having to rethink what they're doing. And it never run at that speed before. And I started to think, if things ain't going to slow down. They're only going to change more. We need a whole different mindset. We need different tools in order to handle the change. So, so I started to... Um, research and talk to people and find out what they needed what they wanted i was already working with future life progression as you know where where we take people to go and look at the future so i just kept tapping in thinking what skills what what do we need in order to thrive in the future because people were on information overload they were coping nothing was settled you don't have a job for life anymore all that's completely changed in, in just a number of years. Mm. So that's that's where I got to the point I'm at, where we're talking to industry leaders, looking at the vast change that's escalating. I thought we need some strategies. So I spent three years researching and two years writing, writing, writing up 
writing the book. So that's five years hard work and obviously all the years of experience doing what I'm doing in order to understand these things. So that's, that's where what brought me to Future Vision. Excellent. So what what's, you know, sort of like what um, things did you think you needed to write about you know from the from the things that people would would were, were tell it would you know were telling you saying we need to know about this we want to know want to know about this well one of the things that because we, we're uh if you talk to any i'll give you an example I, I one of the things i wrote in the book was that i went along to this event and it was about sales and the guy on stage said you all know 200 people write that down and everyone fell apart you know we were struggling to get to 50 but that was in the early 80s you know, today we're connected to thousands, thousands, thousands of people. Um, just the amount of information. I regularly talk to people. A talk I did a couple of years ago, I said that every day I have 200 emails to answer before I start anything. And nobody batted an eyelid because they've all got two, three hundred. One of my friends was talking about six barefoot doctor often said he'd answer 600 emails in a day. Wow. And, yeah. And he would answer them all. And I'd say, what? He'd go, well, you know, it's best because he was so kind. You know, he would. He'd answer every email. Even people are kind of pestering him. He'd still keep answering him. He was so kind. So we've also subscribed to things. There's so much to learn. There's so much to take in. So we subscribe to this stuff. We don't read most of it. If we did, and so our heads are just full up. We've got information overload, too many decisions, and people are starting to burn out, and they're starting to really, really burn yeah. out, really, really burn out. Now, we cannot take in all that information. One of the things I found was there's a guy, I probably won't, I won't be able to say his name, Gerd Gindersen, Gindersen, something like that. It's in the book. Yeah. I, I can look it up. <laughs> now, what he found, it, I mean, you have to use your intuition these days in order to make decisions. You can't go through all that information, which is that I've said for years. You can't just, to the amount of data available today if you sit reading through that you're going to get lost and you still won't make a good decision you still won't hi marilyn you no. still won't make a good decision so what what he found which i found very interesting his study said that people with a certain amount of information so you do an overview of something then you see what your gut feelings or how your intuition works Use your intuition, then you make a good decision. It's almost like a combination of both. One of the things I'm coming to a lot, it means I haven't put this in the book, but we need to be left and right brained. We need both. And they're the people that are going to rule in the future. The people, are, what I wanted to know is who's going to thrive in the future? What is it they got? What's special about them? So intuition plays a large part. Now, what nobody seems to have done, and I've spent years looking at this, long before, uh, probably going back about 25 years, how does intuition work? And it's not a one-size-fits-all. So I've really been examining how it works for you personally. Because once you know how it works, you can teach, you can develop it more, you can make it, um, you can make it so much more. So I've really examined how intuition works but how to use it left and right brain of course we're working in the self-help spiritual field most people are right brain and they need a little bit of left brain they need a little bit of their left brain creeping in i love working with people marilyn's popped up she's great for left and right brain look at that girl left and right brain yeah all the time that's why she can handle the technology that's why she puts key uh work together everything's planned out well well written but she's also got the intuitive side. We need we need to be using both. So that's one aspect. Another one is, as we come up to the time of artificial intelligence, and people seem to think this is something um, very futuristic. It's around you everywhere now. You phone your bank, your, your bank, you're talking to a robot. When you see your doctor, he's reading questions off the screen. He's using AI. It is running everything ai is running everything already and it's going to be more so so what that does that freaks people out because obviously hundreds of thousands if not millions of jobs are going to go but it yeah. does mean you can start doing what you want you can start to really think what do i want to do now there's 
thinking about it, what is it AI can't do? And it's the creative geniuses. It's the people that come up with the genius ideas. There's some, it, there's some human aspects of us you can't get from AI. So it, it's finding what, what is in your heart. What do you want to do? So um, I really look at uh, your purpose. I look at your creative genius because we lose our genius over the years. Studies have shown we lose it over the years. This is a way to get that genius back and use it to come up with something magnificent to, uh, to give to the world. Excellent. And, and you know, sort of like in the book, do you, do you um, give exercise, you know, um, exercises for people to, to practice, you know, get in touch with their intuition and, and go into the future? Yeah, yeah. But it's, it's actually, I've probably put more techniques and exercises in that book than I've ever done before. In fact, you know, somebody said you put too, you put given too much away. You're given too much away. You know, because because of it, because what you're supposed to do is put some in and then charge people loads of money for the rest of it. And they just said you you've given to about a couple of people said that, you know, business people who like to maximize and everything, which I, I take their point, but I want people to be able to there's ten strategies and each strategy is a chapter, and each chapter has a number of exercises. That, you, that are really easy to use, that you can go away, use. You, and you need the 10. You need the 10. You need to know your purpose. You need to have that genius. You need to kind of, what we need, one of the things we need to do, I, I do one exercise that's stop. You know, like in, in sci-fi movies where they put their hand up and everything stops. And yeah. We probably need to do that every day, but I've got an exercise where you just stop, stop. And just feel something and just stop. Give yourself a second to have that awareness of um, of what you need at that moment rather than this constant pressure. I, I think the reason why we've had this lockdown is because the world's been so frantic and we come into the year of 2020, clear vision. 2020 means clear vision. Yeah. We're not, not going to see anything. My spiritual teacher used to say, sit down. And shut up, you know, you've got to stop. She said, <laughs> she was really funny. She said, You're not going to learn a thing unless the rug's pulled from under you, unless you're full. You've got to break your ankle or something so you can't go anywhere. She said, That's why people break their legs so they're yeah. stuck. And, and I think that's kind of happened collectively now, where we're actually in that point where stop. And that I, I teach a few exercises where we slow down time or we stop time. And give ourselves that breathe so we can stop, feel, think, make better decisions. Yeah, I, I, I like that. Yeah, we, we in our busy lives, we don't tend to do a lot of um, uh, stopping and, and, and trying to think. But what you said, which is, you know, which is why I know this lockdown, people have been forced to stop, mm. take time, look at, and look at new ways of working as well and finding yeah. new ways of working. Which, yeah, which ties in with the AI, really. Yeah, absolutely. I've got a chapter on being adaptable because, it, and I mean, we have, we are, we're working different hours. You know, though, you know, that years ago you did the siren or the bell at the end of the road, and everybody would get up, they'd leave the house at a certain time, they'd go to work at a certain time. You got flexible timing, but also you look at you go to Starbucks, people are sitting there working, they've got their laptop or their phone, they're in the middle of a meeting. Mm. Where, we are already adapting incredibly compared to say 20, 30 years ago. So we're already, already doing that. But one, one of the things I, the publisher asked me for, which I'm really grateful, they said they wanted some future life progression in every chapter. So on every technique, we go and have a little glimpse at the future to see how we're going to use that technique. And that, that works out quite handy. You're going to love it, Ray. You're really going to get into this. I'm glad your copies arrived finally <laughs> i know it's, it's like i've been waiting for this for you know several weeks since it was first to, um um but you know probably it's like and i'm going to okay so the universe wants me to wait <laughs> that's what it is that you know my first copy didn't arrive because um if it doesn't turn up that means someone somewhere is going to benefit from 
from your book. This is the way I'm looking, and I find it's, my copy that I can sit down and read. Well, it's funny. That's uh, that's what happened to one of our best practitioners. He ordered uh, a whole bunch of jazz, jazz, jazz window. He ordered a whole bunch of books. They sent him all the wrong books. And he actually threw them across the room. <laughs> he sat across the room two days. He went and picked one up reluctantly, started reading it, and finished it, and just phoned my office and went, "I have to see you." I went, okay. <laughs> yeah, it was really funny. And it, it, you know, it really changed him. The Future Life Progression book, it was exactly what he was looking for. And he's been a major part of our future work, our FLP work. Yeah, yeah, but it, yeah. It, it's it's amazing when 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 you when you get things that you're not meant to have, or you don't get things you are meant to have. It's like it is like you you do need to take that step and go. Actually, there's a reason for this. Mm -mm -mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. I think I was noticing people being quite unsettled in their work, and um, a, a lot of the big shots I work for the change the way what companies the structure of companies is changing has been quite scary when you're in an industry that hasn't changed for decades and decades that is um, the way it's always been done you have the figurehead you have the different departments this is what we do we make nuts and bolts for tractors or whatever it is they do and all of a sudden none of that works anymore uh the whole industry has changed and i'm hearing this all the time from people i mean one girl uh, just said to me um Every, every six months, I contact all my client, all the companies that I do work for. She's consulted. She used to write to them or she'd phone them up. Now she sends an email or phones. And she said, every year, every six months, I do that. And I fill my diary for six months. She said, I've just contacted everybody and I've never been booking. She said, I just don't know what to do. I, I never had this before. And that's something I keep hearing. What works one year might not work the following year. Things are changing. They're changing dramatically. I was with um, one of the self-help guys the other week, and his trainers have gone ballistic over the years. And he just went, it's really dropped off. And I went, no, it does. It has a life. People think they're going to bring out the latest, you know, magic woo-woo training, and, and they'll get a lot of people initially, but it will drop off. And this, this is one of the things we're not expecting. Things have a life. They're not forever. They were years ago, but they're, they're not anymore. So, so we're having to constantly adapt and rethink. I have got a piece in the book that I think you'll like, and people are, are actually getting more lonely. And obviously this uh, virus isn't helping because they're mm. cut off from people. And it, it's bringing up what, we're not cut, what needs to be brought up. I think the yeah. virus is really bringing up stuff. It, 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 it's making us face things. So a lot of people are lonely. Imagine if, if you're working from home, you know, a lot of people are in flats, you know, mm. that haven't got a garden, haven't got any outside space, they're in a flat on their own and they're working. That, that is not ideal, especially with this virus. So people, so I, one of the things I put there is about finding your tribe because I think that's more important than it's ever been. Um, your tribe is so important. And we're not always where we grew up. See, a lot of my tribe is my mates. I've known them. I've known them fifty years. You know, we grew up together, and we are part of a tribe. We, we, you know, we are like a tribe. We're like a family, and you can have more than one. Obviously, if you're a trekker, yeah. join the Star Trek fan club, and you get to know all the trekkers and go to the convention or whatever it is you're into. It can be spiritual stuff. Could be yoga. Could be mm -hmm. going getting drunk and going to parties. Whatever it is, you have you find your tribe. And people are starting to not have a tribe. And I've really, and the younger ones growing up don't have their tribe. And I think it's important to have a tribe. I think it, it adds to us. I think it makes us greater. So I've, I've got a chapter on that because I think it's really significant to find the right people in our lives. You know, we, we kind of need, not just for work, um, but we need that. And it's funny because I've, I've noticed it probably about 30 years ago, People started to socialize via work as opposed mm. to having it as a separate thing. And that was quite a big thing because in my day, you didn't. You, it was very outside. You didn't mix with colleagues outside. And I tell you when it started to change, it was companies would um, start going, oh, we're going to have a jolly. We're all going to seaside. And then they opened a social club. Companies started opening a social club mm. to go to after work. I've always found that odd. I've always thought keep it separate. 
it's great, but if you move on from that job or you're suddenly working from home, you've lost all that. You've lost yeah. that. And having people in your life is important. And plus the fact if you fall out with somebody at work and they go, it makes everything a bit messy or you date somebody for everything seemed to be start to revolve around work. It seemed to own every aspect of people's lives. And people I noticed people started coming for a reading and I'd see them meeting somebody, they go, Oh, is it somebody at work? Straight away. Not why would it be somebody at work? Mm -hmm. Why why have you got why is it your only thought? They'd say, I don't know if I'll meet somebody if it's not through work. So I, I I really feel the tribe okay, you can have a tribe to do with your work, obviously, especially yeah. self-employed, but isn't it nice to have several tribes that you mm. have a real connection to? I think it, it's something we really need now more than we needed years ago. Years ago, we automatically had lots of people in our lives because we lived where we grew up. Yeah. We knew loads of people. We'd have pubs or whatever it is you do, play tennis, whatever it is. And now people are a bit more cut off. They're moving away for work don't know people it's harder to build that network so um so that's one of that's one of the chats i felt was really really important yeah. really important um the creative genius one was really really something but the chapter that got to me the most was about the, the different brains and uh um i know Anne winslow said she got stuck on that chapter kept reading it and said when i was writing that i actually got very very I say stuck, but I wasn't. It was more being absorbed, mm. absolutely so absorbed. And the two guys that have done the most research out of anybody in the world, I, I started talking to them, and they were just wonderful because I said, well, basically, I'm researching this. But you guys have already done the work, so I'm just going to quote you. I'll put in my bit that I've come across and that I do. I'm going to quote. And they went, great, tell us what you need. And they gave me their scientists, their researchers, phenomenal stuff that i think is particularly important especially for our audience because mm. spiritual people are as they always say they're heart centered one of the things i put in the book is imagine having three friends one of them's just really loving and kind and is aware of people's emotions another one's really logical super smart the other one's really got your back and knows what action to take why would you just listen to the one that's emotional yeah and i i think you know when you've got three friends so that that was really really important to me that that chapter i i really uh i still keep going back to it but i think um use now intuition is going to be majorly important for our progress in the future i think use now intuitive process but not just in a woo woo way oh i had a feeling i really have broken down the details of um intuition how it works for you personally i've really broken it down all the components so you can kind of find out how it works for you then when you know how it works for you you can enhance it you're more aware of it you'll use it more often you'll take a peek yeah yeah because I, I think that's where a lot of people do get do get stuck don't they they kind of like yeah people tell me i need to use my intuition but what is my intuition? You know, how do how do I use it? You know, how do I know whether I'm making it up or whether it is my intuition? Yeah, yeah. yeah. It it really is about breaking it down, understanding um, how it works. So, I've, I've, and I've done more work since the book on that. I've actually gone into it a bit deeper because the book's just opened up um, a lot of things that I can do so much more with. So it's quite quite exciting for it to be an ongoing project. And I experimented on a few people. One of the things I'm really grateful for, the, the calibre of the people that, um, I even had a Hollywood director call me up and say, um, would you like me to write something for your book? And I went, yeah. Nice. <laughs> yeah. I was, I was wow. So I had two Hollywood directors uh, write me, head, head of one of the networks, and that's some really cool people um, write a piece for the book. So I'm really grateful to have that backup and that support. So that's been really nice. But there are people I've been in touch with and talked to about what I was working on. And um, people have been tremendously supportive, tremendously. Yeah. So so these people that you were talking to, you know, did you have to, um, you know, was it a long drawn out process to get meetings with them? Did you have to be a particular time and to speak no, to them? 
No, no, not really, because they're people that I've, I've worked for a lot of big, big names and um, people. I, I never talk talk about who they are or anything. If they talk about me, then all well and good. But I yeah. don't. So a lot of them are people I've I've done work with or I've looked into their companies. Because one of the things uh, I do is I oversee certain companies and, and you know big 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 organizations i've talked to some of them uh their ceos or whatever I, i'll talk to them every week and just tell them what i'm picking up and because they have so many decisions to make there's so much so much to it all um running a big organization it's it's just there's so much to constantly be monitoring so uh, there's quite a few of these big shots that I, I weekly I'll, I'll have a look. You know, I've got a credit on a movie. That was pretty cool. That's pretty. That's pretty good. <laughs> yeah, that that's you know that's really sweet that they they acknowledge me. I never I never um ask. I never ask or anything. But, um, but yeah, when that when they give me a credit, that's that's really um that was really sweet, really sweet. But yeah, no, I already kind of know them or have met them. I interviewed a, a Norwegian. Uh, you never know. You never, never know. Yeah, I'd like. To, I'd like to talk to him because his mother said she she thought he was um, deaf because she'd speak to him and he wouldn't hear her and he'd just be staring up at the sky. Then he'd say, oh, "I'm going to make a rocket." And he could say things like that, but he did make a rocket. <laughs> he's made lots of rockets, and I, I, that, I like that that he's a daydreamer, and I like he, he's. I think he's a little bit on the spectrum, the way he talks, you know, just the way he comes up with things. But I quite like the way he thinks. I mean, when he split up his wife and he was thinking, right, I need a girlfriend, he said to one of his friends, right, I need a girlfriend. How many hours a week do you have to give them? And I, I love that. I, I, I just, I like people who think different. I sometimes mm -hmm. watch how people think. So I'd love to have interviewed him. But as you say, next book, so I want to know. I want to write another book about the future. Yeah, uh, well, I think what you've been talking about, you, you know, there, there are there are some some books there. And don't forget, if you're watching this, you know, this is a chance. If you've got any questions you want to ask Anne, then please do ask whilst you, whilst you've got her here. Um, and that, um, and looking at uh, some of the uh, comments that we we've, we've had so far. Um, Marilyn said, watched an interesting film last night called Upgrade. It's about an openly driven um ai driven world oh look out for that upgrade that rings the bell actually i, wonder if I might have, i might have uh, seen it is it on net it's probably on net if it's on netflix i'll look up for that upgrade yeah. make a note of that that sounds really good yep and marilyn says the new book sounds great thank you yeah it's good yeah i've worked hard yeah. on it yeah i've really worked hard on it but it gives a huge amount of information i'll make sure i've got a lot I like to get rid of all the waffle, you know. It's easy. You can fill a book with waffle and not give away much, but because I'm not patient, I can't do that. <laughs> but why, why would you? you? You're writing a book for people, and and you know, you know, being yeah. a myself, you know, if I'm reading a book, I want to, you know, I really want to go into it. Oh, yeah, yeah. Why not? Yeah, I know. I, I, it's really got a lot in it, so um, yes, yeah, immense fun, immense fun. Yeah. Yep, and Sita says, I've got all of Anne's books, but Instant Intuition is my fave. I go back to it a lot. I started reading that again the other day, you know, just because you forget what you put in all those years ago. I went back over it. There's a few things in there. I totally didn't remember writing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> back over my, over my own material. <laughs> but why Why not? You know, you might give you some new ideas for, for other stuff. And I think, oh, I can expand on that one. Yes, exactly. Yeah, absolutely. Marilyn, I feel like a change, like a change direction. of direction is in order for me. Any thoughts? Yeah, I, I, the thing is, funny enough, I mentioned earlier, Marilyn, um, I just have to put it online when you put something up about media. And I, I mean, I've always said I could, you're really, really good. But Marilyn said oh, I used to be shy. I can't. You can't look at her and imagine her shy, can you? And hiding. Not really. Head. You can't even get your head around that. But um, yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I think you'd be really good on television. I, I think you're going to go more and more towards media now. Um, I felt that earlier. You know, you. I know you've had a few bits lately, and you've been quite high profile lately. But I, I think media. Yeah, I think that will be your your thing. You'll be more in studios or 
get snapped up by by um, something, you know, by a network or production company, I, I reckon, for sure. Yeah, that that would be pretty good. And I got says, loves intuition healing. Yeah, and hi, and you're in Norway. I she does. She back. says love from home, love from Norway. I should be back. Yeah, it's oh, it's just such a lovely place. Do you know one of the things with Norway that we don't hear? The food is so good. The food is so darn good. It's so fresh, good quality food. Best breakfast you'll get. Seriously, best breakfast, Norway. True. If I ever, if I ever get to Norway, <laughs> <laughs> then then I'll definitely then I'll definitely will, will try try the try the try the breakfast. Oh, de definitely get a hotel. They they'll put on, but it is the best quality. Everything the eggs are pro really good. Egg. Yeah, and I'm really hot on proper breakfast, and they do. <laughs> <laughs> you, you can't be a breakfast you know a breakfast is sets you up for the day yeah it really does yeah i think so it makes you strong it makes you stronger like the bull yeah we need we need that protein i do yeah, yeah norway's been really nice i've got a lot of practitioners yeah. out there now they've been incredible to work with yeah and going mm -hmm. back to um when you were talking about your tribe um it's kind of like i think you know with with the COVID 19 now if people are finding new tribes because they're going online and they'll find, you know, and they're learning different things, you know, learn to play the guitar, learn to paint, etc. So they're actually finding other outlets rather than their own work or their own immediate circle. Yeah. One of the things I see come in, I think Facebook will be replaced and I think it will be by something that goes more niche, you know, rather than general. I think it, it's something that will almost help people find their group, their 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 tribe. Their, their, so it, it will definitely be more. Where Facebook, you do have pages for this and pages for that. So if we wanted to go and find out about Vikings, um, we could we could join a Viking page or people who love certain music. I'm on a Lord Byron page. I quite like his poetry. Um, um, I bet that's I bet that is an interesting one. Amazing poet, you know, when somebody's really opens up everything they feel, whatever you're into. I mean, we've sometimes just thought up the most obscure thing for a bit of a laugh, you know, just the most obscure, like I like the smell of carpets or something completely stupid, and just put it in, and there will be a page. For it. I don't know if there's that one, but you come up with an obscure thing, there'll be a page for it. But I got a feeling the thing that overtakes Facebook is much more characterized that so you can find your niche better it's almost as if it will be organized by categories but you can start a new category that, that, that kind of what i'm expecting mm. something to set up yeah that, that'll, that'll, that'll be pretty cool that you can go and find what category you want I'll, and find new ones yeah oh definitely I, I you know there will be new there definitely will be new um in the future because we're, we're still out there's so many new things still to come do you know, years ago, people said there's nothing new to be invented. There's nothing new to come. That was about 100 years ago. And we're constantly seeing new things coming our way. And that's not going to change in the near future. Definitely not. Yeah. Um, and, yeah, I got to say, yes, best breakfast. It is the best. Really good quality. Yeah, I, I didn't realise, but really good quality food. Yeah, really, really um fresh really fresh food you know really organic you know really yeah, yeah. really good quality everything's good quality yeah yeah really nice and Sita says I'm finding my tribe now and said years ago I'd meet more people it's now coming clear it's mainly online and I love it thank you Anne. I was set to of course you're creating your own tribe could you, you probably <laughs> a, a viking queen absolutely queen. Well, I've got a bit of viking blood actually yeah I'd my DNA. I would. I, I would never have. Get, I would never have guessed looking at you or your <laughs> name or anything that you there would be any Viking blood there. <laughs> it's, it's mainly London, actually. You go through my <laughs> bloodline; it's all London. I'd never lose this accent, that's for sure. <laughs> Sieta found her tribe by following her heart. She wanted mm. to lose weight, get fit, and I've never known anybody stick to anything like Sieta. I mean, every day she's out there doing her walking, doing her exercising, watching what she, and she looks like she's melting. You see her going, that's she does. 
But of course, that's her tribe now. She's creating her own tribe. And that's that's pretty tremendous, isn't it? As people follow her, follow her. And she's inspiring people. She's inspiring me because I think you know, she's doing better than me. Yeah. <laughs> that, um, yeah, she's creating her own tribe. Isn't that lovely how we, how we start to do that? How we start to attract the people that are into what we're into. Yeah, exactly. Um, now, as you know, I normally do an angel card reading or a guided meditation. But I also thought that maybe I could do an angel card for you and everyone watching. Mm. Maybe you could do a little something yourself um, as well, whether that's intuition, three brains or something like mm. that. What would you reckon? I like the card. That sounds good. Now, let me think. What can I do? OK, I want... Um, yeah, let me think. Um, okay, while you're doing that, if I do the cards and then may, that might give you a little bit of inspiration as well. See what oh. the card comes up yeah. um, and says. So what do we all need to know for our highest good? What is doing if it's good? Perfect. Uncovering treasure beneath the surface lies great bounty. Wow. Oh, that's lovely. Perfect card to come up with what we've been talking about. That's a dragon. That's a dragon with its with all its um, jewels. Good, because I'm a double dragon. That's gorgeous. I love that. I love dragons. I love yeah. having dragon energy. Okay. I love, I love dragons as well. <laughs> okay, so what I want you guys to do is think of a decision that you need to make. Just think of a decision you need to make. It might be a course to take or what to concentrate on. Okay, and what I want you to do is, first of all, think of something. It might be, should I take that course? Should I date that person? Should I go to that place on holiday? Something that could be one decision you could make. What I want you to do is bring it into your heart. And get a sense of what your heart is telling you. That's really good. And I usually find if it doesn't sit well in your heart, you've basically got your answer because you've got to kind of have that, you know, that feeling for it. But if it sits well in your heart, I want you to bring the decision into your head. And that will tell you what you need to do, what your first steps are, what the process is. And then bring it down into your gut. And this is where you're going to take action. So what's the big action you need to take in order to move that forward? And if you just use that little process when you've got when you are thinking of doing something, and that little process, uh, you'll get far more information because a lot of time we, we bring something to, we, we do usually bring something into our heart and go oh it feels good then we can run off and do it totally bloody impractical we don't know what we're doing we haven't organized any of the steps stop let's get a bit of logic let's get a plan together and that's why spiritual people often don't make the progress they want because it feels good and so we we do it because we love it well um great if you just want to play around but if we were actually want to do something properly you wasn't just thinking about your day job was you when we did that uh ish <laughs> <laughs> i've got a little snapshot <laughs> i got a little snapshot there <laughs> yes 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 in in a in a in a, in a roundabout way yes i yeah. yes i was mm, yeah i do <laughs> I got a little snapshot there. That was funny. <laughs> oh, oh, it's 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 always always so um, in, interesting and sort of like um because because obviously when when I did my training we actually um you tried that out on us um mm. at 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 the at the time which which was which was really good and again it kind of like goes with with the card that we got uncovering treasure you know beneath the surface lies great bounty. And it is, you know, we we all know what we should be doing and where we should be going and how we should be doing it. 
Mm. But we sometimes don't give ourselves that permission to do that. And this card is saying now is the time really to actually start going in um, and using stuff like like the three brains, using mm. intuition to mm. actually bring up that stuff in into into the present, into the here and now. Yeah, absolutely. And I, I when I work with big shots, they always talk about intuition, always, always. And if you listen to business leaders, no matter how logical they are, they they might be brilliant financiers, they always talk about hunch, gut feeling. They always, always do. They always use their their um their intuitive uh, abilities. In fact, there's been two major studies and they found people at the top use their intuition far more than people who get stuck lower down. People that are relying on facts and figures just get stuck. They don't do as well in their career. The big shots use their intuition and that tells you what you need to know because they've got to where they are. And if you want to achieve anything in life, you might not want to make a fortune or be a CEO, but whatever you want to achieve, use your intuition you will get there you you will get there there's something in you that will guide you and i think in my first book i mentioned carmen and carmen built well she's built she's done very very well in life very very well and it's basically she's doing intuition for every decision in her business amazing to build your, your own little empire <laughs> make every decision based on intuition is pretty cool isn't it Oh, that yeah, and 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 we and people, should, you know, we should be using our intuition a lot more um, with with what we're doing, and you know, and hopefully where people are indoors now, they've actually got the time to actually concentrate, yeah, um, and and check in with their with their intuition, yeah, yeah, and that. So everyone, I hope you've enjoyed this and found it insightful, and that the words of um, wisdom that Anne, Anne has given you will help you further on on your journey. Um, now, Anne, if people want to connect with you, how do they do that? I know I've been uh, on your website's um, been going across my page. <laughs> well, <laughs> if you tap into Google and Jerish, you, you can see me on Facebook, but I'm not sure. I pop up in a lot of places. So, but yeah, just tap Anne Jerish into Facebook, find me, say hello, say hi. I'd love to hear from you. Um, and Jerry, yeah, I pop up a lot, so just Google me. I don't know anybody else with my name, which is quite handy. No, I've not, I've not found anyone else with you with, you, with your name. <laughs> and uh, Agot says, so true, living it by my intuition. Brilliant. Well done. <laughs> yeah, which, which, which is, which is absolutely, absolutely brilliant. Um, so, um, everyone, if you've um, reached that crossroads in your life and you need help finding your destiny and getting clear on your um, path then I would love to be that guide for you reach out and connect with me so that we can arrange a free 20 30 minute session via Skype so I can find out more about you and how I can help you on your journey and please do if you haven't got it yet do go and uh, order Anne's book you might be lucky and you might actually get it first time <laughs> and, and the beauty is it's actually on Kindle as well so you don't need to worry about um uh, a hard a hardback if, if you if you don't want to and of course my angel wings membership community is now open you know we're talking about um tribe and i've created this membership um where not only um do we work with um ascended masters and archangels but we actually um you know like-minded people where we can talk about all things um esoterical and that so, so you don't feel odd about saying it outside um, so, you know, that's a chance where you get to, um, you know, to spread your wings and soar, um, especially if you become a founding member and you can help um, shape how the membership site are, um, goes. And of course, if you uh, sign up to my weekly newsletter on my website, then you get a free guided relaxation, relaxation meditation and other free gifts. So thank you, Anne, so much for um, being my guest on the show. And thank you everyone so much for watching. And I'd like you to invite you to share this video as I'm sure there are more women who feel lost and want to get clear on their destiny just like you. And please do, you know, lead into this the back and use the three brains again. You, you know, it's it's a brilliant way of, of helping you um, uh, get where you need to go. And I look forward to you joining me again, same time, same place next week, where my guest will be author Wendy Frank, who I knows. Oh, listen to Wendy about writing books. That girl knows exactly what to do. She'll give you great advice. 
yeah, yeah, she will do. And uh, Agot says, thank you. And, uh, and Jackie sends a heart. Thanks, Jax. <laughs> And that. So again, thank you everyone for watching. Thank you so much, Anne, for being my show. And um, yeah, do check out Anne, get her book, and I will see everyone next week. Fabulous. See okay. you again. Bye.